Hello everybody, welcome, my name is Richard and in this video I want to compare two Tesla Model 3s. So on the used car market, obviously prices vary, but now even in the mid 20s and upper 20s, you see Tesla Model 3 long ranges like this one here, and you see the later standard ranges. So this, when I say later, I mean the post 2021, the ones with the heat pump and LFP battery. And I want to see what the real world range difference is between the two. So a pre heat pump long range and a heat pump standard range. Is there going to be that much difference between them? Now, obviously the long range is dual motor. It does have a bigger battery, it is faster as well, and it's four wheel drive. But these later ones are really efficient with a 60 kilowatt hour LFP battery in this one. You charge it to 100% every day if you want to. And they're so efficient that I don't think the real world range is too far off. So in this video, we're gonna do a test and find out. Now I'm not available tomorrow, but Gintz behind the camera there and our colleague Serge, you've seen them both from videos before, are gonna be taking these cars down to Cornwall to do a comparison in the real world. So the plan is uh, we're actually gonna charge these cars up now. This one has a, a daily recommended charging limit at 90%, so we're gonna charge it at 90%. 100% charge limit on this one, uh, which is recommended daily. So this would be 100% charge. They're gonna leave here at those states of charge. They're gonna be going home tonight. Then tomorrow morning from a cold start, and we've got some terrible weather at the moment. It's not especially freezing, but it's cold and damp and wet and horrible. Uh, as anyone in the UK in the beginning of January will know, and see how their efficiency compares as they drive down on a journey, kind of 170 odd miles tomorrow. How much of the battery percentage will they use and what will their efficiency be? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. So I'll leave you from here. That's the introduction. It's gonna be over to Gintz and Serge to let you know some of the details, how they get on tomorrow and the difference between the 2022 standard range 60 kilowatt hour LFP and the 2019 Model 3 long range. One thing I will just highlight before I leave is that our Model 3, this is Graham, it's one of our cars, been in loads of videos. Um, he's on a 19 inch sport wheel, so they're probably gonna be a little bit less efficient than the 18 inch aeros on this car. So we're gonna make a little bit of an allowance for Graham for that, but earlier car without the, the uh, heat pump from a cold start tomorrow. Let's see exactly what the efficiency difference is and how much difference there is in the world range. Right, here we go. Uh, it's 7.36 in the morning, uh, me and Serge, Serge is just there. So we just entered the first stop, which is gonna be supercharger at Lifton. So my car thinks we can drive there with 29%. And what about you, Serge? 18%. So he's in long range, I'm in a standard range. And the cars are actually saying they're preconditioning now, both of them, mine and Serge's. So we're gonna let them uh, do whatever they wanna do and see how it pans out. Two hours, 45 minutes, 123 miles to go. And Serge has told me there's gonna be storm coming up our way. Storm hang, cool, off we go. And just a quick thing I forgot to say, I'm gonna start with 89% of battery from the location we just met, and Serge is gonna start with 82. So while we're stuck in the traffic, eight o'clock in the morning, perfect. We were just looking at the map and seeing what the car is doing um, regarding just preconditioning and navigation to supercharge. As I said earlier in the video, we're navigating to lift and supercharger. And my car told we can ride over 29%. And my car started preconditioning straight away, and it was doing so for, for the journey until now, which is about 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, well, that's a bit weird. Like it's two and a half hour journey and it's already preconditioning using lower battery. And I went to this a new energy screen and the car told me already it used 2.1 miles from the trip extra to precondition the battery and we'll do so throughout the whole journey. So what are we going to do now is we're going to switch off preconditioning. The, the total journey we have to do now until supercharge is 120 miles. So we're going to switch off preconditioning. So we're navigating there for 60 miles without preconditioning. And then the rest of the 60 miles, we're going to turn the preconditioning on so the battery can warm up as much as it needs to. So this is what we can do now. A small thing I forgot to say regarding the battery percentages is that we both took these cars home and we suppose switch off the sentry mode off on both of the cars. So search sentry mode was off and I thought my sentry mode was off as well because I didn't see the red light, the red eye thing, whatever that's recording. And I was like, cool, that's off. And when I got this in the car this morning, I was like, oh no it's on so unfortunately i forgot to switch it off well i thought it switched off uh, but it wasn't so therefore the car lost six percent of the battery overnight um which is not brilliant uh, but it's not going to really change anything for us because we're measuring efficiency rather than the used battery percentage and we we can compensate that adding plus 
66% of the battery uh, when we get there, so it's fine. But the main thing, efficiency data will still be correct. Right, so we both have covered 50 miles, so let's check in. So I've got 71% of battery left. And uh, my average is 250 watt hours per mile, and I use 13 kilowatt hours. So I've got 64%. Um, 64. I've used 17 kilowatts, and my efficiency is 339 watt hours per mile. <laughs> Right, so do you hear that? So he used 17 kilowatt hours, I used 13, so there's a difference. And his efficiency is much worse than mine. So his car thinks he's gonna arrive at 30% to our pin, which is just next to the lift and supercharger. My car thinks it's gonna be 40%. So there's a 10% difference. So we still have 85 miles to go. Uh, in about 25 miles, we're gonna turn on the preconditioning, as in just press the navigate to supercharger and the car will start preconditioning if it needs so so and then we'll compare data with the preconditioning as well and another thing i just went to the energy screen and it says here increased climate control activity air drag tire drag and battery conditioning due to cold weather costs 0.9 percent of this trip so it means what the car does is actually still preconditioning battery for the drive, not for the charging them. So it's probably keeping optimal temperature for the battery. And because the region actually came back now, so I think it's managing the optimal temperature for the battery where all the region's available and so you have no problems with driving it. Uh, but for the charging, I think it will struggle now. So we have four miles left and we're gonna turn it off preconditioning on. So we get 61 miles left till supercharger. Uh, let's do some data now and then we'll turn on the preconditioning. So let me have a look, autopilot is working nicely, so let's have a look. So 76 miles covered, 18 kilowatt hours used, 230 watt hours per mile. That is efficient, we'll put the calculations here. 61% um, battery left, so let's see how is Serge doing. Uh, I've got 53% uh, left, um, used 24 kilowatts so far, and the efficiency is 314 watt hours per mile. So he used 24 kilowatt hours, so there's a 6 kilowatt hour difference. As always, Sunder Range shows how efficient it is compared to, and even though the long range is very efficient, but this car is just in another level. Okay, let's turn on the preconditioning for the supercharger. So the Sergio's car, uh, before preconditioning, would arrive at the, our pin with 27%. Now that we turn on the preconditioning, it's gonna arrive there with 19%. Minus 41 before. 29 now so again the battery uh, sizes are different but mine would use a bit more, more percent to warm up and as we think LFP battery needs a bit more heat anyway so but at the moment I'm arriving with more battery percentage than surge so let's finish the journey and then compare efficiency about 43 miles into the journey after we switched on the preconditioning preconditioning has stopped so the car is preconditioned it might turn back on uh, briefly before we arrive to the charge just to make sure the temperature is up, up up to the standard but it looks like the car is preconditioned now and uh, yeah the numbers have increased the efficiency has worsened a bit uh, but we'll turn numbers when we get there we'll compare it to the long range behind me Right, so we have arrived. Let's have a look at the numbers. So since last charge, which was yesterday evening, 138 miles, 36 kilowatt hours used. And uh, now the average is 259. That's including preconditioning. You can also have a look at this graph. So it used 4.4% for battery uh, preconditioning. And they arrived at 28%. Cool, let's have a look at the surge stats. Okay, so 130 miles covered, same as me. 340 watt hours per mile. And as you can see, this car is not as, as efficient as the other one. And battery conditioning used much more than me. Actually, 8.2% used compared to mine, 4 point something. So these are the numbers. So let's plug the cars in and see which charges quicker. I think it's gonna be this one. 
and he arrived here at 18% or at 28%, so 10% difference in arrival. Sandwich arrived at 28%, about 72 miles left of range. Long range arrived at 18%, about 50 odd miles left in a battery. But remember, that started with 100%, this started with 90 but I also used 6% overnight in tension mode that I forgot to switch off. These V4 and massive. And it has some light. Where's that? Where's some screens or something? Here. Let's have a look. No. Yeah, I don't think it says anything. No, it doesn't. It turn off. It's also raining. I think you need a jacket. So we just plugged in both cars. Let's see what they do. This is a standard range 45 kilowatts, 52, 59. Serge, what are you doing? All right, so Serge is at 2.55, I'm at 1.26. Graham is charging always ridiculously fast, don't know why, but it's still ramping up, let's see. 1.43, 1.44. Okay, it looks like this is where it's gonna stay. 1.43, 1.42. So in 10 minutes, we recharged back to 61%, added 19 kilowatts. And same time, in 10, so there's been 10 minutes, and Serge is at 60%, and how many kilowatts? 20, 30 kilowatts. And there we go. So they actually took, they're the same now, both at 60%, and one added less, one added more. That charges quicker, that charges slower, but smaller battery, bigger battery, so actually the same thing. So there we go. So here we go, it just clicked 15 minutes through here. I'm at 73%, 73%, 26 kilowatt hours added, and Serge is at 71. 71% and 38. Now. <laughs> Look at that, that's actually charged quicker than Graham. Interesting. So there was that, there was a little interesting trip and comparison between long range 2019 and 2022 standard range. As you can see, standard range is much more efficient and I'll put all the data of the pro rata range and efficiency on the table here. And also, char interestingly, charging speed, uh, although that car was charging much quicker at 250 straight away, as you plug in, ramped up to 250, stayed there for a bit. This was slowly ramping up to 145-ish, and then went down to 130, first stayed there for a bit, and then sli slightly uh, decreased again. But overall, it actually charged quicker, because it has a smaller battery, it used less energy, so therefore, this actually charged a couple minutes quicker than the long range, which is quite interesting as well. Okay, that was really interesting. I was really looking forward to seeing that video myself, so I hope you have done as well. Um, well done, Ginson Search, for filming that. Good work. Now, I have to say, from our long range there, our car we call Graham, that Serge was driving, that's about the worst range of efficiency we've seen from that car. It was terrible weather that day, and again, I will reiterate, we've got the upgraded 19-inch sport wheels, which would have cost it some efficiency as well. Now, the efficiency of the newer long ranges is better. 2021 cars onwards had the heat pumps, and me and Gintz did film a day driving around Wales with the older long range and the newer long range, so we can show you the differences of efficiency on that video, and I'll try and put a link in the description below. But from this one, what we've just taken away is that on the used market, you might be comparing these two. And actually, the standard range goes just as far for the same battery percentage. And actually, although it has a slower recharging speed, recharged the same number of miles in the same amount of time. In fact, slightly better. So that was a really interesting aspect of that video, I thought. Now, what's the point of buying a long range? Well, it is faster, it is four-wheel drive. You do have that potential that if you charge it 100% for some extra range. And it's fine to go to 100% as long as you're going to use it. So I personally, would I pick a long range? Well, I probably would actually, because I like that little bit of extra turn of speed. And you can do acceleration boost, so it's even faster. But a really interesting comparison and amazing efficiency from the standard range there. Very interesting indeed. So I hope you found that interesting and useful. I certainly did. Uh, so make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel if you're not already. And we'll be doing some more videos soon. In fact, one of our next videos will be on this Model 3 Performance that we own and run. And this has got now over 100,000 miles. It's been trouble free. It's a brilliant car. And so we're going to do some filming with that and how that's uh, held up over 100,000 miles, what the battery health is like and that kind of thing. So we're going to be filming that very soon. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. and We'll see you in the next one.